Welcome back. We continue our review of uh, the analysis on President Buhari's one year in office. We're looking at the judiciary today. Joining me now on the News at 10 is legal practitioner GT Ogunye. Thank you for joining us on the News at 10. It's my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. How would you assess the judiciary generally in the last one year? I think that the judiciary uh, in the past one year has fared uh, as best as it could in the circumstances. Uh, to start with, the judiciary continues to be hobbled by structural problems, um, operational problems, and uh, ethical challenges. Uh, and these are recurring issues. Uh, but in the past one year, the judiciary uh, continues to function, taking election petitions, uh, even though the way some of them were eventually resolved at the level of the Supreme Court generated a lot of uh, controversies and critique, including that robust critique by Professor Issa Sage, uh, which nobody has uh, challenged thus far. Um, and now uh, that we have a new law in town called the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, the judiciary is uh, implementing or operating that law now at the federal level. And so we've seen what the law can do with uh, the trials uh, that we've seen at the federal level, the anti-corruption high-profile Trials. So in sum, I would say that the judiciary is going to do its best in the past one year under this administration. Uh, the Buhari administration did come into power on the mantra of change, and everyone has been expecting that change to reflect in all arms of government, including the judiciary. So what, in your opinion, has been a major change in the judiciary in the last one year? Well, um, you know, this evening, um, incidentally, uh, one of your headlines uh, was uh, the statement made by the president today to the effect that he will work with the judiciary to ensure that loots are recovered. Mm -hmm. Between that promising statement and uh, which, which uh, 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 if you will, suggest that the president is willing to constructively engage the judiciary and the frustrating statement the president made in Fireway Ethiopia uh, on 31st of January when he said that the judiciary was his headache. We've seen a shift and that points, uh, you know, uh, the way forward, what has to be done in engaging uh, the judiciary. And so in the past one year, uh, with the government promising change and with an expectant uh, populist that the change will permit uh, the three arms of government and reflect very well in society, what we've seen the judiciary do particularly in the handling of anti-corruption cases, is that we've had a law which has uh, revolutionized, if you will, uh, the conduct of criminal proceedings at the federal level. We're hoping that this will be replicated in all the states. So in the past one year, unlike before, when, for example, uh, the 2007 set governors had their cases, you know, uh, moving through the entire labyrinth of the judiciary up to the Supreme Court uh, before preliminary matters mm. were eventually resolved and now they are coming back. Now, we've had our appellate courts not obstructing the trials of a high cost in the handling of these anti-corruption cases. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to move one inch if that old law was still, uh, was, was still to be there. So the point is that uh, we, we can critique the judiciary, but we will need reformation. We will need the reforms of our law to also aid the judiciary to do its work so that Nigerians can then point uh, out uh, you know, where the blame ought to be pointed out. So if it is judiciary that is not working, we'll know. But uh, with uh, certain reforms, we can see that the judiciary can work. So in the past one year, we've seen the judiciary warming up. And so um, we yeah. expect that uh, in a short while, there will be record convictions. Some Nigerians have been saying that there will not be convictions. Uh, the, caveat there, though, the caveat, yes. though, is that uh, the judiciary is not expected to pander and convict even if there is no basis for conviction. But for those who are eager to see conviction, with the ACJ uh, A, you know, who have uh, convictions coming in, in torrents uh, so soon. Uh, looking at the justice sector institutions, I'm talking about the police, uh, which is the first point of contact for anyone who's seeking access to justice, the prison, which are 
people, where people are remanded, how can the administration make sure that they are more effective in justice delivery? You know, um, the, the administration can do this. They can do a lot, but we've not seen a uh, move in this direction. Um, for example, uh, recently we told that there's going to be uh, recruitment in the police force, and so we're talking about 10,000 recruitment, but that's not, if you go and recruit 100,000, 200,000 into the federal police, it won't address the issue of whether a federal Nigeria can be policed by a unitary police. So the administration will have to understand it, that when you're talking about devolution of powers, you also have to look at what the police you know, uh, have to do, what uh, kind of devolution you have at that level. It is not right for a federal police not to be catered for, for states to be using their mega resources, some of them that cannot even pay salaries, to then be providing for the federal police or unitary police, so to speak. So, talking about the police, the prison, it's, you need those changes. For example, uh, Lagos has Krikri, Badagri, and uh, uh, Ikoyi prison, and the population is exploding. So, why can't we have state prisons? Why can't we have local government prisons? Just as we have county jails and all that. So, across the chain, across the sector, you will need to have uh, these reforms in tandem with the change that has been promised by Niger to, uh, promise, uh, Nigerians by the administration. Mr. Jitio Gwenye, thank you for joining us on the News at 10. Yes, appreciate pleasure. your thoughts yes. on the review. The Anambra State Government has held a retreat aimed at re-strategizing the state's development performance in the second half of the governor's first term in office. Governor Willie Obiano asked members of his cabinet to work as a team and ensure that decision-making and effective execution remain the hallmark of the administration. This is the third time the Anambra State Government is holding its retreat. Governor Willie Obiano, accompanied by his wife, his deputy, and other members of the cabinet, gather to discuss new strategies on how to govern the state in the remaining two years. The retreat had three hours of breakout group sessions where members deliberated on crucial topics for development and excellence. We are looking at the structure now of our presentation. How is it going to be? At the end, they reconvened at the general forum where each team leader made their presentations. We felt that uh, there should be public enlightenment campaign on the newly adopted U.S. foundation. It means that we take a decision today and it will take a month. The governor highlights some of his achievements. What Ndenambra should know is that uh, we are very much on course. We've been able to deliver uh, in the first two years many things that we've already promised. Three flyovers, you know, in Oka, the longest bridge uh, that across River Mabala, 280 uh, kilometers, all fully done. You know, uh, 37 roads started by my predecessor, already completed. You know, street lighting, nightlife is back. You know, the state is booming. Uh, attracted well, under two years, uh, over 4.3 billion investments into Anambra State in the areas of agriculture, trade and commerce, oil and gas, and industrialization. What we have done is to redesign, re-strategize in order to work on the remaining expectations so that we increase the level of experience for Anambra people. We've always had a direction, but this time is like we are going into the second half and we really want to be able to make better positive impact on the people. Rounding off, the governor urges the people of Anambra, both home and abroad, to contribute to developing the state and gave assurances of his commitment to playing his own part. Let's check in now on the world of business news with Melinda Akinami. You first. First Bank. Thank you so much, Amarachi. Welcome to Business News. 
The federal government has established a committee on the recovery of loans given to banks and corporate organizations by the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria, AMCON. The committee, which will be led by the Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, will determine the current status of AMCON's recovery achievements from inception to date, how government can repay debts owed to the organization, amongst other issues. Representatives from various ministries, departments and agencies are also part of this committee. Nigeria needs to step up quality growth as the country moves towards economic transformation. This is the view of the former Minister of Finance, Dr. Kalu Idikakalu. According to him, one practical way to achieve this is by improving the quality of products manufactured in the country. We should not make it sound like we can micromanage diversification. If you look at our import bill and export bill, we have several products. So what you are doing is, the question is not diversification per se. The question is, how do you get all these products that you are producing very little quantities of? How do you increase them? How do you improve the quality? How do you package them for exports? And how do you even package them for internal distribution so that you're expanding domestic demand? So it is not diversification like we are going to reinvent any wheel. How do we produce more of what we're already producing to make them more important? And in that sense, you know, when we glibly talk about agriculture being uh, 40, 50, 60 percent of GDP, that already is a problem that shows that we've not been diversifying because no matter how high agriculture is growing, seven, eight, nine percent, the non-agricultural sectors should be growing so much faster. The Nigerian Stock Exchange is closed today in commemoration of Democracy Day. Ahead of resumption tomorrow, Tempo Ashaju gives us a reflection of how the market performed last week. It's good to have you join us. Welcome to Stock Market Reports. In commemoration of Democracy Day in the country, the Nigerian Stock Exchange and its listed corporate entities are closed. Ahead of resumption tomorrow, here's a reflection on how the market performed week and week before the break. It was a bullish week as the all share index appreciated by 6.59% to close at 28,902.25. Market capitalization also grew to 9.92 trillion naira. Now, investors exchanged 2.33 billion shares valued at 14.78 billion naira in 24,942 deals. DN Mayer was the topmost gainer for the week with 28.77% ahead of Wando and Naku. With a 10.59% decline, Lan Africa was the heaviest loser. Union Daikon and University Press followed with 9.87% and 9.61% each. And that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Temple Ashaju. Thank you so much, Temple. The former chief executive of Zurich Insurance has committed suicide. The death of Mr. Martin Singh takes the number of suicides by executives at Switzerland's biggest companies to five in just eight years. The 59-year-old, who was chief executive between 2010 and 2015, resigned on December the 1st, 2015, after a failed takeover bid. The management of Zurich says it is stunned and deeply shaken by his debt. U.S. and London stock markets are closed for the Memorial Day, but others in Europe and Asia closed in the green on the prospect of interest rate hikes from the United States Federal Reserve. Here are some of the figures. That's business news. Thank you so much for watching. The News at 10 continues in a moment. You first. First Bank. 
As part of its corporate social responsibility, ExxonMobil, a subsidiary of ESSO Exploration and Production Nigeria Limited, has donated computer-based instructional materials to various schools in Oshun State. The company and its partners also donated solar-powered boreholes to various communities across Ife and Modakeke towns, with projects totaling 300 million naira across Nigeria. Commissioning the projects in Ileife, Oshun State, the technical manager, Nigeria Projects Organization Unit for ExxonMobil, Dr. Adetunji Obawale, says the company is committed to impacting lives across Nigeria. The team from ExxonMobil arrives at the palace of the owner of Ife, Oba Adeye Ogunusi. They are here on a courtesy call to the monarch to intimate him on the commissioning ceremony for the community assistance projects executed in Ife in consonance with its era North Phase 2 crude oil deep water production project recently completed for streaming. We have our areas of operations and all that, but we don't concentrate only on our areas of operations because we are one with Nigeria. So we said, okay, let's do some community assistance projects all over the country. They will see your logo. Maybe they are using that computer that you bought. That ExxonMobil played a pivotal role in my life. And any position you are, please remember us. We shouldn't put everything to government. The team then moves from St. John's Grammar School to the Ife Anglican Grammar School, Arubidi, down to Odudua College, all in Ife amongst other benefiting schools to commission the projects. Actually, in particular, I have a commission. Three schools have been provided with e-learning centers equipped with 21 computers with backup power and a three-year internet service. Odudua College and Origo Community High School also benefited from the gesture of ExxonMobil and can now boast of two science library modules. I'm very happy for the program because this is the first step in our school to give our computer and system to operate in our school. This is a good thing. The Olorun Shogo Market in Modakeke in Ilefe is one of the five benefiting centers for the solar-powered boreholes sunk by ExxonMobil and its partners across Ilefe and Modakeke towns. We know the federal government is doing a whole lot to better the, you know, the lives of the people in terms of providing power infrastructure, but we don't even want to wait for that. So that's why we are powering those boreholes with solar system that doesn't require for PSN to come up. The community really need to benefit. What we're going to really going to save life in the area of a uh, borehole. No doubt, residents of Ilefe and Modakeke in Oshun State will for a long time cherish the memories of these projects in the native by the oil major. Still ahead on the news at 10, Nigeria's Flamingos get tricky draw against Brazil, England and North Korea in Group C of the Women's Under-17 World Cup. We'll have more in sports news. Please stay with us.